evening, y'all. Good evening, good evening. It is Thursday, June 29th, 2023. Welcome to the Keeping It Real Conversation Show with your host, Camila, aka Sunshine. We are in the land of the living, so of course we need to be excited about that. Again, we are live on Facebook. We are live on the YouTube channel. It's the name of the show. Please like, share, and subscribe. And do me a favor, tell somebody we are live right now. Uh, We are live on Twitch. We are live on Twitter. We are live on Spotify. Again, please find us somewhere on social media. Please tell somebody. um, I have an exciting show tonight. Right now, my guest is trying to get on. Uh, She's having technical difficulties. Again, I have talked to her and um, we're trying to get her on. Um, Of course, it is a, a fabulous clothing and bag designer um, here from the city of Detroit, Patricia Clark. And once she um, finds out how to get on here, um, we will have her here tonight. In the meantime, again, I am grateful to be here um, having this conversation with you guys. Um, I'm glad that we're able to turn the corner. Sometimes we have one of those crazy weeks where it seems like everything is that could go wrong went wrong. But yet and still, we still have grace. We yet still in the land of the living that we're able to change things, speak things and change it. Um, it was so many things since last weekend that was just crazy. Um, but it has turned. Can somebody say it turned? Um, I am back smiling back having a good time tonight again we're waiting for Patricia to get on we're trying to um, trying to find the right browser for her um, to get on tonight to have a conversation with us about her designs about her luxury clothing line that she personally stitched herself as well as her bag line um, and when I say she's awesome, also she is a part of um, a fashion show that's coming here in the city of Detroit, August 11th, at um, um, downtown. She will be a part of Detroit Swag Fashion Show. Um, yeah, so I'm excited um, for her. Um, also, she's another person that um, I used to sing next to um, in the alto section for the Peerless Times play. Um, and that is where I met her at. Um, from her designs, I was saying, um, and I was introducing her as um, my fashion consultant, that when I get to the red carpet, that she will be trusting me. And um, she's like, well, why you got to wait until then? So again um you gotta network you gotta put those things out as though they were and you'll never know you never know um so yes i'm excited um um again well, we do have some good news, um, some things that was going on in the news um, with their finding parts to the submergible um, vessel um, that was going down into the, um, the Titanic. Um, so that was good. Um, so many things that we could, of course, we're going to be thankful and grateful for. I understand, Patricia. Um, Alita is going to reach out to you to see if um, she can help you. Um, as we know, right now we're in super um, affected by polluted air um, with Canada and the wildfires and things of that nature. Um, make sure that you guys are still wearing your masks. When necessary, um, people are really having um, 
difficult times breathing, especially if you have asthma um, or any of those kind of conditions, allergies, things of that nature. Um, make sure you keep yourself safe, your family safe, do what needs to be done to make sure that you don't have to go to the hospital or anything else of that nature. Again, um, we're just so excited that um, we're still breathing. It could be another way. However, so in the meantime, while we're um, waiting on Patricia, oddly, something happened this morning while I was visiting Bernie. And there was initiated an unsaid um, jumping on me with the bro code. So I'm having a conversation. Someone keeps asking me every day, when are when is your show? I tell this person every day what time my show starts, the days it starts. And if you keep asking me this to me, Either you, one, you don't care, or two, you just not listening. So I'm having this conversation. And I'm like, I'm tired of telling you the same time, same day, same back channel. And another uh, customer comes in and he said, Wow, she's starting already, huh? She sounds like my girlfriend, always trying to start stuff and just want to start an argument. I'm like, It's not an argument. It's the fact that you keep asking me the same stuff and you're not listening. So he agrees. Then someone else comes in and they decide, all these gentlemen decide, hey, he's right. You're wrong. This is the bro code. We never go against each other. Say what? So now since I'm the only female in here, I just got jumped. So usually the thing is, if one person is wrong, however the thing is, you just be quiet. You don't jump in. But these gentlemen wanted to jump in into the conversation of, you're just fussy. It's like, no, I'm not fussy. I am tired of repeating myself. So when you get into a place where you're tired of repeating yourself, that means the other person either doesn't care or they're not listening. Not listening. So, bro code happened to me today and I thought it was really funny. So one gentleman said, I'm going to listen to your show just to hear this conversation about bro code. Well, just to let you guys know, women have codes too. Even with men and women, do we always follow the code? No, we do not. Unfortunately, some people don't go by the rules. And for some people, they think rules are meant to be broken. So therefore, this is what they do. So today I said I was going to bring up the whole conversation about bro code. And even if you don't really know the person, obviously what happened to me this morning was a case in point, strangers teaming up on me in the knowledge of you're just fussy. And that was not the case. So, um, I have um, another friend I'm still trying to help Patricia get on. Hopefully it works where we can talk to her about her designs, how she started to get into fashion. Um, how she comes up with her designs. And when I tell you, um, um, she was able to design outfits for some of the main characters in Perilous Times. And 
it was a nice outfit. Um, I've seen some of her work, especially around prom time, weddings and things of that nature. You don't want to sleep on her. Don't want to sleep on her. Um, one young lady um, said that she wanted to look like she was melting into the ground. Her dress was melting into the ground. So it was fire orange. And when I tell you how it was designed, all the way down to the bottom of her dress, it looked like she was melting into the ground. Um, and I was very impressed. Um, she's also done several fashion shows, several bridal um, shows, things of that nature, because again, she is top notch. Her designs are not regular at all. At all. It's not simple at all. Again, if you have not um, gotten your tickets yet, for Detroit Swag Fashion Show, which will be again August 11th. It will be at the Eastern Market downtown, shed number three. Tickets are on sale right now on Eventbrite. So, uh, general admission is $40, VIP is $60, and it will be who's who of Detroit in the building. Um, so, you don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss Patricia. And you will see some of her designs in this fashion show. Not only will you not see just see her, but you will actually see me walking as well. We are um, planning to have a hundred models in this fashion show. Of course, sponsored by the M Agency um, with uh, Mike Lynch. So you don't want to miss this experience. Again, um, the theme song that you're listening to in the background was done by my peerless time friend, um, Robert Jeffries. He just said I was bored and I wanted to do something, so he did this for me. Um, the theme of keeping it real conversations with Sunshine. Um, of course, I'm always grateful for anyone who does anything for me. If you know me, that you know that is one of my love languages. Um, of acts of service so I'm grateful for him um, he's a character love him love him love him love him um, again the other day was I want to say Monday was the first day of summer so you guys make sure that you um, enjoy life go on vacation take some time to go down to the um, the beach or picnic, go for walks, enjoy the weather while you still can. Um, before we know it and blink, we will be right back in winter time, wishing that the summer was here again. So um, do what necessary. Um, I was talking with one of my cousins about really sitting down and thinking about what you want to do and I began to talk about the bucket list things you want to do before your time is up um, so the thing will be in 2024, everybody knows I have a thing for Italy. 2024, the Olympics will be in Italy. And in 2028, the Olympics will be in LA. So, I'm just throwing that out there. I would love not only go to Italy but also one of my bucket list items was to attend the Olympics see history being made right there in front of me
Um, Patricia, are you still trying? Also, did Alita get in touch with you? And in the meantime, um, let's do some promotions. So again, this show um, is sponsored also by um, Black Top Street Ball Association. Um, Chris, Wally Dixon. Um, Black Top Street Ball Association is also going on their first tour with Star in August in the state of New Jersey. If you want to know their schedule, um, they'll be doing something every weekend touring. Um, Again, go to their website and you'll see where they're going to end up, where they're going. Uh, We're trying to open up the lines where we're taking back our culture of basketball. Where did it start? On the blacktop. So again, um, Patricia, reach out to Alita Cotton on Messenger. She's going to try to help you. Alita, A-L-E-T-A Cotton, C-O-T-T-O-N. Blacktop will start again, like I said, um, first weekend in August so please please we need your support again um, Larry Luke Phillips of course with Waffle Cafe Detroit I'm doing it real big they had their first waffling it after dark last night um, at the cafe and it was a big smash again um, I was watching it on live. Um, you don't want to miss that as well. Uh, $10 cover charge with live music. Of course, eating. Um, wonderful food. It's a good place for networking. And they're open Monday through Saturday. Um, and you don't want to miss them. Um, some of the best food. Um, Monday through Saturday, again, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Address 18685 
Illinois, Detroit, Michigan. Phone number 313-739-6308. Again, of course, my friend Alita Cotton with ACT's Tees. 313-380-0321. Again, she's on Facebook, A-Y-E-C-E-E. Um, the best ginger and turmeric drinks on this side of heaven. I don't know what she does to it, but my goodness today. Um, through her, I understand the properties of turmeric, the properties of ginger, um, and can't go wrong with it. Can't go wrong. It's affordable. In some areas, she do deliver. Again, um, from the small ones all the way to the big jars, you don't want to miss it. Um, it's great for your immune system. Um, keep swelling down. All of those good things. You don't want to miss that as well. Again, um, in October of last year, I was able to uh, write my first single book, The Blueprint God's Design. You don't want to miss that. Um, again, I had to start over. And I tell you some of the things leading up to that, as well as um, more of the things I did to start over. And it's okay to sometimes start over. Um, I want to uh, give a shout out to I had a, a cousin who was hospitalized yesterday and so I want to make sure and continue to keep him in prayer he was doing much better today and they want to keep him more so um, in the next two days for observation so that's good uh, my mom is doing much better. Um, she fell on fell on Monday, and so she's doing much better. She's no longer having dizzy spells right now, and so that is good. Um, she she go to the doctor tomorrow, so keep her lifted as well. Mm. Still trying to be hopeful with um, Patricia tonight to be able to get on the show. Um, for those who are on, do you have anything that you want to talk about, or is there anything that you want to ask me? here just to um, plug um, he's fine but is he safe um, stage play was written by um, Kim Brooks I will actually be playing the grandma in the um, play so that play will be at Ford Theater in Dearborn Michigan um, the weekend of Sweetie's Day which is October 22nd and 23rd um, those tickets will go on sale July 14th. Again, um, I'm excited about some of the things that's going on and can continue to be busy. Um, there are some things that uh, I'll be doing a little cameos in as an extra. So, so.
Okay. Thank you. You need tickets to what? A fashion show or stage play? Or both? Always, I will continue to put more information out on social media as much as I can. Um, not only just for support um, for me, but also the people that I am doing this with and for. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, also, just to plug in what's coming up next week. So, um, next Tuesday is the holiday, so I am off. Um, I won't have a show on the 4th. Um, but that on the 6th, I will have a TT from the D once again. But this time, she won't come by herself. She will be with her husband, Spiffy McVeigh from D12. Um, her and her husband will be talking about successful building of an empire with your family, the things that they do together and what they do separately to um, help their family, their household. We want to also know um, they do ministry together, marriage ministry together as well. So we want to talk to them. And I think that was very exciting to be able to see successful marriages Black marriages at that, um, that is possible, um, even with the strong woman as well as the strong man, um, and see how that works. Of course, we always know that every marriage is different, every dynamic is different, but even if we talk about the tips, the do's and don'ts, it'll help somebody. So we'll be talking to them on the 6th. And then the week after that, um, I have I Am Booster, which is um, an awesome artist who also tried out for The Voice right here from Detroit. Um, I heard him play and sing, and I was so impressed that afterwards, I was like, who are you? Who are you? I need to know you. And immediately we set up a show date and he will be here on the 13th, if I'm not mistaken. No, he will be on the 11th. On the 13th, we will have Sage on and he's an up and coming young artist who I don't really get down with rap like that, but his was a uh, conscious rap. And I think that type of conversation needs to be brought back as far as when it comes to hip hop. Um, not shoot them up, all of those type of things, but really talking about topics, really talking about solutions. He was doing that. So again, he's another person that once he got off the stage, I wanted to know who he was. Um, also to encourage him to continue to do what he was doing and um, he will be on on the 13th. So I'm always ahead of time. Most of the time I'm already booked up already a month already. Um, and most of the time if I have special shows it's because the person, um, my Tuesdays and Thursdays are already booked or they just can't come on on the Tuesday and Thursday. So I'll have a Sunday set aside for a special conversation. Again, I do apologize for on Tuesday, um, the person that was supposed to be on didn't show up. I was already feeling some type of way, so I didn't want to vent in the wrong way. So I had to cut it short. I was already feeling some type of way that whole week. And I never want to um, display a certain way to people who has nothing to do with what I was feeling. It's not fair to you, nor is it fair to me. So again, I apologize um, for having a short show on Tuesday, as well as almost going down the rabbit hole. So please accept my apology on that, on that note. Um, again, 
we're constantly moving forward we're constantly trying to help one another and this is what this show is all about we're having real conversations about real life things situations survival things um promoting their music promoting their books promoting their movies doing all of these things so we all can feel like we're winning i don't get nothing out of that but gratitude of saying you're welcome um it doesn't look like patricia is going to be able to come on I don't know what's going on for her not to be able to get on the link or find the right browser to get on. Um, but does anyone else have any questions, concerns? Um, of course, I'm always in the place of if you love the show share it, like it, tell somebody about it. If you have people in your circle that you feel like have a story to tell or they have a book or an album or whatever the case may be, send them my way. Okay. Thank you. Um, we're trying to get as many people who can help Patricia to get on the link um, so she can talk about her designs and her business. On the 18th, I have a young man um, who will be on, Derek Turner, and we're going to have definitely a great conversation. Um, he has his own business, um, the shop culture, the culture shop, sorry. And he literally drives an hour to get to his shop every day. And then he takes that same drive home. We talk about dedication. There's no excuses. We do everything. What you're passionate about, you should go all hard for it. So it was always asked the question of what would you do if you would did it for free, what are you passionate about? This right here. And the fun thing is to learn something new twice a week, at least, about a new human. It's awesome. Then to find out that in our conversations, we have more alike than we are different. You'll never know that until you ask questions. So you set aside your own opinions and open up and really diverse with somebody. It's, it's the thing of, yes, you're curious, but yes, I want to know what made you who you are. Why do you do the things that you do? It's always a why. So, the story goes, in the pandemic, when the world was shut down, and the question became, do we really care about each other? Do you? I will reach out to people. How are you doing? How are you feeling? A lot of people don't like isolation. Especially when we couldn't go out. Unfortunately for me, 
I didn't have a downtime. I was still out delivering mail every day. As I was considered a frontline worker, I was still out there and even caught COVID. In the meantime, it was always the question, does anybody care? So, during those moments, I got on Facebook. Let's talk. And the things that I found out about people I knew and then people I didn't know. I had no idea. Some I found out were related to me. Some I found out were friends with people that I knew for years. Some people, it was just finding out connections. And this is how the concept of the six degrees of separation came in. And to find like, oh, you know this person, you know that person. I had no clue, no idea. And then people start inboxing me. You should talk to. And then it just got bigger and bigger. And then I had a conversation. And we just talked about this last week with Buck. I met him and he had the Groove Radio Detroit going on. He had um, podcasting going on. He showed me the ropes. And I've been here ever since. He said, you should take this show, what you do on Facebook, and start podcasting. And then I had the sharp idea. Once I got into it, and I began to have conversations with people and I wanted to help them find, connect with somebody I knew in my circle to help them get further in what they were doing. I said, you know what? I want to go take this show to TV. And eventually I got hooked on Ellen DeGeneres. Why Ellen? Well, Ellen... They might have tried to do or say whatever that has nothing to do with me. Huh? Did you send him the link? Oh, he said it let him in. So what's going on with your your computer? That's what I'm saying. What browser is he using? So is anyone on if if you have Okay. So try them and try to get on. And it should let you in the studio and I should be able to see you. I want you guys to always understand there's always somebody around you that can help. You don't have to feel like you have to know everything. don't there's no age to say that you can stop or you have to stop learning keep keep going keep learning push past all fears you never know what's on the other side here I am at 
45 feeling like I'm just now living out my dreams on stage in front of a camera doing all these different things that I, I had no clue, no idea that I could do. And I can't, it's not in my vocabulary. I know too many people who do what I do and being very successful at it. So guess what? I ask them questions. I get inspired by what they do and their drive their personal drive. I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there. For all, not just women, but the men, I recommend that you do one fashion show. It would change your life. I promise you. It's nothing like it. The adrenaline, the confidence, learning how to walk. Nobody can walk like you, but you. Um, M Agency, this fashion show will be my third. And it still feel like it's the first time. Do it. Flaws and all. Do it. Oh, she finally got it, Lord. She finally got it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I've been trying like a thousand. Oh, you can hang that up. Yep. Okay. Hi. Now, who finally <laughs> got you on? Huh? Who finally got you on? My daughter. Let me use her phone. I've been mm -hmm. on computers. I've been everywhere. I have two of them, and I use my phone trying to get on, and it would not let me on. I'm like, <laughs> so would you everybody, uh, welcome, Miss Patricia Clark. Hey, everybody! No way. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm so ill be with these dog on phones. I swear. Yeah. Is it too dark in here? Do you need me to brighten this up a little bit or this is fine? That's fine. Okay. Um, so the conversation that we wanted to, and I've just been talking, um, mainly is the luxury clothing brand. How do you say that? Adara and Demena. What does that mean? Beautiful, beautiful. So Adara is beautiful in um, uh, in Basque. So it means beautiful in Basque. And Andamena is beautiful in Tulu. Mm. So it was it was very spiritual how the name came about because I had really gotten rid of my other clothing brand because of everything that was attached to it. And I was praying about it. And I was like, God, I really need you know, to do something a little bit different. And I mean, when I tell you that every single thing that I've come up with, I always pray about it. And God gave me the name for my luxury bag line and for my clothing line. So I just relaunched my line literally just a year ago. And the name of the, the luxury um, bag line is what? Hobo and Clutch. Okay. And the spelling is H-O-B-E-A-U-X. So it, it, it was just amazing. And I'm like, in the beginning when I started, 
I was just sketching and sketching and sketching and I was like sewing for hours on end until every sample that he gave me got done. So it, it was just an amazing thing for me. I loved every bit of it and like it's been a uphill climb ever since. It's just been non-stop. It's been consistent. I was, um, I actually had retired. I didn't want to sew anymore. Mm -hmm. So and just last year, my friend that we went to school with, she was like, well, Pat, uh, you promised me in school that if I was to ever do a show, you would do my show for me. And I was like, dang, I forgot. <laughs> and I was like, I did tell her that. But I am a woman of my word. I said, okay. And when I did this show, I was like, Lord, I just don't want to do it with Gabier. I don't. And I was praying about it. She came to me in December. I was praying about it in January. I got my LLC for it then. And I, everything happened within that month. And then April was the show. So I did the show in April. And it's been just a train. Like, I mean, like a locomotive just been going off. I have not stopped sewing since April of 2021. It has been insane <laughs> how everything has been happening. So can you hear me good on this? I'm sorry. Mm hmm yeah, so it's been a, it's been a total blessing um, as far as that, you know, and there's a lost art of tailoring. No one really does actual designing or anything anymore, like the, the tailoring concept of it, darts and non-stretch fabrics and things like that, or actually measuring and doing full-on uh, patterns for everyone, like custom patterns, draping or drafting. Now everything stretches, you know, so I was just like, okay, well, what's the use of constantly designing when no one respects or even cares for that particular form of art anymore? It was almost lost. And um, I started teaching at Wayne State last year, um, teaching Lebanese women to sew as well. So it was, it, it was just, it was just a blessing. And when she had me do that show, it just struck fire in me again. And I was just thanking God for it because I have not stopped since. Wow. So you actually went to school for design, right? Yeah. And I did not want to. I wanted to be a truck driver. I didn't want to design anything, which was crazy because throughout my life, I did fashion shows. Even when I was younger, I did fashion shows. Didn't care what it was. I was like, well, she want, they want me to go out here and wear this outfit and walk back. So I was like, okay. I'm thinking like, all right, whatever. <laughs> but not knowing that God had been showing me the whole time. And I was so adamant about driving trucks. I wanted to drive a truck so bad. I couldn't sew a straight line when I got to school. And I can draw anything. So as far as sketching, I had, I used to just draw clothes. I love birds and things like that. And I had drew uh, at least 250 designs before school started. Just something I wanted to do before I started to go to school. I went to school at IADT. And um, I didn't know when I had gotten there. Like at the time, my grandma passed. And the guy called me and I was like, I do not want to come here. So he talked to me for like weeks. And I was like, God, he, he. Yeah, I said, I don't want to. I was like, I don't want to do this because I was in a really bad place. And he was like, I think this will be really good for you. Be really good for you. So I went to, I went to school. And the first week that I had gotten there, I did not. I, I didn't want to do anything. So I was sitting in class and a shirt like flew off the machine because it was so fast. So I was packing up to leave. <laughs> I was like, yep, I told you. I said, I knew what God told I do not want to do this. And as I was um, packing up to leave, there's a lady, which was my teacher, that taught me everything outside of IADT. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have known anything. She basically gave me her mantle. She told me to sit down from the hallway it says sit down and i'm like who are you talking to i'm a grown i'm like all the way grown at this time i'm like the oldest in my class and she was like sit down and you talk to me after class and when she did this it was just something about her presence 
it was, uh, I just respected it. I said, okay, I'm going to stay here because the teacher that I had, I didn't know how to sew. She was like, well, why are you here? If you don't know how to sew, I said, well, $80,000, you could at least teach me how to sew a straight line, mm -hmm. you know? And she put me out and was like, okay, well, we, I don't want to teach you how to sew or anything like this. This is for people that basically knows how to sew already. You can at least know how to do a beginning stitch or something. I, I didn't know what, what was, was on the machine or anything. And when I talked to her after class, she was like, Patricia, you're a designer and you don't know it. And I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> and I was like, I'm leaving here. I don't want to deal with anything else. She was like, look, it's a lot of black women and men that always give up and you have so much in you she's like i know that you god is following you she's like, i can feel it on you but she said i don't know what happened in your life or what was going on but she was oh, i'm so sorry um I, I apologize this is her phone okay. <laughs> so she said that i wanted to i was a designer and i did not know it long story short that she took me under her wing. She would come into school early and leave early late just for me. And she taught me how to sew. She taught me every skill set that she known. And the bittersweet part about it, she passed before I could show her where she has me and where God blessed her to be in my life now. So I'm like, a lot of the stuff I do, I dedicate to her. And I thank God for the gift of being able to and putting her in my life. But if it wasn't for Jacqueline Floyd, I would not know how to do any of the designs that I do now. Wow. She literally passed before I graduated. I was able to show her one garment of mine that I did. And that was it. And it's like, it really bothers me too, but it was a blessing. And I could still hear her drilling me today. So if I'm trying to cut corners, she's like, no, nah, Pat cut that out and redo it again and stuff like that. So I, I appreciate all the blessings that she had given me in regards to showing me how to sew. And she made me understand a lot of different things. Actually, I did. I hated math, but sewing taught me how to do fractions. So that was a bigger blessing because now I can look at pretty much anything and the math portion of it is amazing to me. I'm shocked at how I comprehend with it because I hated math. So it taught me that and science. Like, I love science in the beginning, but the math portion of it was a blessing to me because I could not stand math at all. So, this is a great part of my life. I just love it. I love sewing <laughs> now, so you can't stop me from doing it now. Okay. Um, I did tell them that um, usually I go into how I met the person. I told them that we were singing alto together. Oh, Okay. In perilous times, and that's how I met you. And I also, um, in our first week together, once I found out that you was a designer, what did I tell you? That I would be designing your stuff for you as soon as everything jumps off. You were definitely gonna call me, and I was gonna be your designer, especially definitely for red carpets. <laughs> so I was gonna be all the red carpets. I was going to do all the designs for that. And I was glad that I said, thank you, G. She was a blessing. You are such a blessing. It was so sweet. I told everybody. They was like, is it happening right now? I said, no. But you got to speak those things as though they were. And, and then I after did. that, what happened? After that, oh, or in which instance, <laughs> we got blessed with so much. Okay, so let the people know. In the play, who designed Erica People's outfit? <laughs> well, let me tell you how that came about. <laughs> Adara and Domena designed Erica People's outfit. And I asked her, and I was like, I didn't want to ask her. I said, well, you know, I wanted to create it. I wanted to create a piece for her. Not knowing what she was going to say. Or anything, I was telling her that I was a designer and Shirley and Pam is absolutely amazing. They did not detest it. They didn't say anything. They just sat there to see what the end was going to be in regards to the conversation. And she was like, absolutely. Before I can even get it out. And I was like, dang, she hasn't seen any of my work yet. But she said yes. And she gave me 
her stylist number and she was like no nah, give her the black phone i want to be her to be able to contact me directly so my heart almost stopped i'm like oh my goodness <laughs> like she said yes yeah. so she said show me some of your work and she was like oh oh my god yes yes she was like tell her she was like well can you do something for me for the show i was like absolutely and i was like you gonna wear it in this show right now <laughs> and she was like right. the very night i had to sketch and send her flats like a couple hours later I sent her the design. I had already known. I saw her and I saw the outfit that the garment that I made for her. I had already seen it. I was like, I told her my the the blessing in it. I said a week before we met you that day, my husband and I were watching a movie that she was in, and I was like, I'm gonna dress her one day, not knowing that a week later that I was literally gonna be dressing her. And I was like, that was fast, God. <laughs> and she was like. Well, can you make me a piece for the show? I said, absolutely. So by that night, I was done. I sketched everything. I sent it to our stylist. He was like, your your pieces are amazing. And he was like, we're definitely going to keep you in the loop. And I had made, I made the piece for her. We did the fitting and everything. She loved it. And she wore it every single night of the show. And I, she said that I'm not going to crawl on the floor in this. I'm going to do my main piece with this outfit, the garment that you made me. She said, I'm not crawling on the floor in this. She said, I'm doing all of my other scenes in this outfit. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, Erica said yes. <laughs> so I'm still elated. I'm just on cloud nine still about that. I'm floating. And so for, for those who don't know who Erica Peoples is, so Erica Peoples is one of the main actress in um, True to the Game with Columbus Short. Mm -hmm. um, she has another one out with Columbus Short right now. Um, mm -hmm. She's on uh, All American. Yes. Um, she has a, a nice um, package behind her of who she is. And yes. to be able to um, show her design and erica peoples came in i think the last week of the show mm -hmm. the last week of our practice like mm -hmm. as they would say um and she got us together like she, hers was more on a spiritual of us coming as a unit yeah uh, she came in she did exercises with us um to get us loose to get us, you know, flowing energy wise with each other. And even every night she did that, especially the final night. Yeah. And um, even when we met her and the last time I saw her, she gave me a hug, took a picture and she said, I'm going to see you again. And I just looked like I believed her. Yeah. It was like, I don't know when we're going to see each other, but she believes that we yeah. don't see each other again. And um it was her 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 spirit, and then again for her to be from here, from Michigan, um, was a plus. Um, so to see her backstage cheering us on as if we were on a uh, Broadway <laughs> for real. Yes, and she yes. was like, Some of y'all. Are if not better than the people who were on Broadway because she she did Broadway before. Mm -hmm. She really encouraged us like, yes, yeah, keep did. going, keep going, keep doing what y'all guys are doing. You guys are great. You sound great. You look great. Um, keep it up. So again, I'm excited for you to be able to live out an instant prophecy instantaneous and when i met mama peoples that's what that's what solidified everything for me i went up there to do her fitting and she was like mom mom this is the lady i was talking about i'm like she told her mama about me <laughs> i was like no you didn't tell your mama about me so it was just a very surreal humbling and blessed moment for me and I just, I wouldn't trade anything. That just took it 
to a whole nother level. And I was like, okay, at this point, she said, know your worth. She said, do not fold from this day forward. She didn't know what was going on. I said, okay, Prophet Erica, see you, <laughs> you doing a whole lot. And she was just said, do not fold because she said, you definitely need to know your worth and don't let anybody take away from your gift. And she said, you are hired. And she said that you will be doing the same thing you said. She said, you will be doing all of my red carpet pieces. I was outdone. And I'm waiting patiently to decide to design the coldest piece <laughs> for her. And I know that's just the beginning because the way the Lord does things, he gives you a taste of where you're going. And once he gives you that taste, you kind of just, okay, you start hungering for it. And I believe God solely 100% that, as Pam said, that this play was bigger than all of us. And we didn't know it. You didn't know what the opportunities were going to be and who you were going to meet or who you who you came across anyway. And I'm like, at this particular time, I'm like, we stepped over into our destiny. And I just, that play was, it did something to me. Just even just the rehearsals were a blessing. The rehearsals were so powerful that some days I couldn't even keep my eyes open from the tears that were flowing. Like I was, it, it was just a, a, it was a wonderful experience that I can honestly say, I thank God for it. I didn't think in a million years I would be there. Mm -hmm. I never thought about it. Me neither. So um, uh, coming in again, I said to myself, the amount of talent, there's no way I was measuring myself by the room. <laughs> Mm -hmm. right? There's no way I belong in here. Exactly. And then, oh, I feel. Being by the second rehearsal, Miss Shirley was like, "Stop acting scared. You belong in here. That's why we chose you." <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Drill Sergeant Shirley. Right. So show up. Yeah. And um, I had that. I didn't have that problem no more. My confidence um sh shot up, and then I was like rubbing elbows with everybody like yeah i belong here this is my other side of the family um that we're all great awesome doing so much like if i had my way my show will be full by december just by the talent of each person that was in perilous times yes and i'm still gonna do it no i touch and agree with you absolutely um from people who some background with um Patty LaBelle, Charlie Wilson, um Americans Got Talent, I mean you name it, mm -hmm. movies, actresses, and I mean and the list will continue to go on and on. Mm -hmm. Um but I was glad that uh we found our spaces in the spaces in this play yeah. and then to see um your design every night on stage <laughs> to follow prom season let me go before prom season which you did not know is my friend keisha mc mcday mm -hmm. um was at this last uh bridal uh show mm -hmm. And you guys were using her um, glass um, bouquet. bouquet. Yep. I, I met, actually, I met her. And she was like, your dresses would go perfect with these, these bouquets. And they did. And the shots were, um, like, it was just mint. We meshed well. And I said, yes, take every one of the, my bride, take all of my models, do whatever you want to do with them. And it the her pieces were absolutely gorgeous. One of those, I think it was the silver butterfly one. Mm -hmm. Her the dress she had on, like was identical to her um bouquet. And I was like, You ain't <laughs> I was like, How did that? She's like, I don't know, but I was supposed to be in that show, but I forgot what happened. Mm -hmm. Um, because I'm 
you know, I help Keisha. And mm-hmm. so I'm like, yeah, I know Patricia. She a princess. She's like, what? I'm like, yes. Mm-hmm. So here we go with this connection thing. Um, mm-hmm. We think it's light, but it's not. Like, um, and Keisha, when I tell you anointed to do what she does with um, her bridal pieces, like, mm-hmm. I can't yes. wait for the day where people really, you know, recognize her and really um, get her where she needs to be. Um, also, I wanted to bring up into prom season. There was a young lady that was on your page that she said, um, if I'm not mistaken, that she wanted to melt into the ground. Yes. The one with the orange. Yes. And when I saw <laughs> it, I asked, and what was crazy that baby has been waiting for me to do her dress since fourth grade. What? Yes. So it's been like, a, it's, it's been a journey because she's like, I am finally here. <laughs> and she said, I know you can do it. She said, I want to look like my, I want my puddle so big. It look like I'm melting into the grass. <laughs> and I said, are you sure? She said, yes. So I said, count it done, whatever you want. And she, I said, if you want to look like you melting into the ground, you're going to look like liquid gold when I finish with you. You're going to look like lava. <laughs> so she was like, you did it, you did it. But that that blessed me because she waited. She could have went with anybody. She could have forgotten about me. And that's what makes me keep going. Just that thing there. And that orange dress was one of my favorites this year it was one of my favorites yeah year. it was definitely beautiful because she looked like um <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> um, yeah thank you so much <laughs> that was awesome um i'm still thinking to myself like oh when red carpet come or whatever the case may be, I don't know what Patricia gonna do, but I know for sure it's gonna be done. I do know that. <laughs> As is, I'm thinking, and I wanted to tell. I've been wanting to tell you this since I met you. Honestly, oh. what? Lord. <laughs> oh Lord, do I need to hold on to the couch? No, you don't need to hold on to the couch. I, If you don't mind me telling you this, I'm just saying when I first met you, I could never focus because it was always bright. Oh. Light counters yeah. were always I ain't saying nothing bad about you. <laughs> I'm not to say nothing bad. I'm like, oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, no, no, no. And I'm like, it was in my ministry. I said, yes, I do see a lot, but I just said, I want, I've been wanting to tell you that I was like, is she a journalist? I'm like, what does she do? I didn't even know that you do pot did podcasts. I didn't know anything about that. I said, she is something different about her. I'm like singing. Okay. Yeah. She here. She audition. We doing this. I said, has, has she been around the world already? I'm like, is she a world-renowned journalist or somebody? I didn't know, but that's what I felt. And I said, well, shoot, it's some big wigs up in here. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to take anything lightly with anybody. And the first day you blessed me so much. You just said, we're going to do this thing together. And we're not going to give up. We're going to keep going until the very last day. That was when we were in the basement of the church. The first day we did rehearsal. And I said, wow, she is amazing. So I don't know where the Lord is taking you after this. Outside of up, <laughs> I just want to be there to applaud you in all of your endeavors. Um, I'm not going to cry tonight. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> um, I'm going to say... It's been rough. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm going to say it's been rough. 
And sometimes you get to a place when you're tired. Yeah. And you don't know, do I got it? Did I don't know what happened. That's all I know. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you, just to be honest, it's my show. Yeah, got to keep it real because that's all I know. You put so much energy to make everybody feel the same energy that you have. Or you want everybody to understand, I want you to win. I push you because I want you to win. But you don't get that same energy back. You don't. Right. So that same thing you like, do people get it? Do you understand why I'm doing what I'm doing? You got to realize you can't do this by yourself. Mm-hmm. And neither can I. You're right. Some of the um, you be the biggest supporter for everybody. And it's sad they don't support you. It's hurtful. Very. Very. Now, I can totally agree with you in that instance. And it took my husband to tell me this. And I mean, it's an old scripture. And like, he bought something back to my grandma I used to say, when I say, I say the same exact things that you're saying right now, because I'm like, I know what type of a designer I am. I know that I'm absolutely amazing. I'm like, what am I not doing? But he said, babe, the race isn't given to the swift. I was like, oh, so, but to the one that endureth until the end. So I said, okay, that kind of deflated some of that anxiety and that self-sabotage that I kept doing to myself. Because no one's going to have your faith. No one's going to have your drive. No one's going to applaud you more than you. So if you are looking for the world to give you what you give it, you will always be disappointed. Always. And I literally just beat myself up just this past week actually about the same thing i'm like lord i know the gift that you gave me i know you told me to do this but why this cycle what what is going on why am i not where i want to be not where i'm supposed to be this is only me wanting to be where i want to be and he tells us he's like look when i'm ready for you to be there And when you're ready to be there, you will be there. So don't think that all of this is for nothing. All of it's just a platform. All of this is just basically your your footage, just like how football players do. This, 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 This is all of your work that you're sending off to your scouts right now. But it is not gonna be in vain. You have not done any of this. You have not did this play. You're not doing these podcasts for nothing. You're not encouraging people for nothing because that's who you are. But don't expect the world to give you back what you give the world because the world is not meant to do that for you. Mm -hmm. So I've cried many nights and uh, like not sewing from 2011 up to 2021 was crazy. I just stopped. I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Don't nobody care about what I do. Nobody want to pay me. No, I mean, like my skill set, no one wants this anymore. Don't, don't nobody want to do anything. So I just sat back and he said, okay, how long are you going to sit there and cry and moan and weep about a gift that I gave you? I didn't tell you to put it down. I wouldn't have gave it to you if I wanted you to put it down. Mm Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have given you the ideas that you have if I wanted you to shut those ideas out. Do not die with my gift in you. It's not meant for nobody else. And ain't nobody else going to take Sunshine Spot at all because you have a whole name that's bright, lady. (laughs) (laughs) Who, How you going to have a name like Sunshine and try and let the world dampen it? Like, come on. 
this is not <laughs> anything that you're doing is not in vain. Do you hear me? Yes, Nothing. Right. So I'm like, if we need to skip to Malu or go down this yellow brick road together, I am not going anywhere. And yes, I am going to design your gown at the Oscars. And <laughs> we're going, why are you sitting up there interviewing people at the Met Gala or whatever you want to do or anything? I am there. And I'm like, sometimes the world gives you these curve balls that hurt. And I'm like, sometimes you can't bend. They're going to hit you. But you're not going to fall or break, though. So get that out your system. We ain't going to be sitting up there weeping and, and, and crying about giving up nothing. Listen. Because my husband asked, who, who are you? He didn't even know you was in the show. He said, "Do she is she running the whole thing? Who is that? He saw you walking outside. So I'm all like, other people see the greatness in you. You just don't see it. Wait, what? Yeah, that was crazy. He just said this going out the door today. He was like, is she running the whole thing? Is that, I mean, who is she one of the producers? Is she doing this? What, who is that? He said she, he was like, she has to be some, something. He was like, what does she do? Who is she? He was like. From the play? The, the, the husband that you met that night, he saw you at the rehearsal the other day. He asked about this at the rehearsal. Wait. The modeling rehearsal? Yes. Wait, wait, wait. You. It, let it, me tell you something. You gonna make me cry for real, for real. Mm. He didn't even come in. My husband was outside. So I'm just saying, please stop. You are an amazing woman. Mm. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. It was meant for this conversation tonight. Because I felt some type of way leaving rehearsal Saturday. And this is going to take into a whole nother conversation that eventually we're going to have to talk about. Mm -hmm. Is dealing with things that you thought you were over that you really not and one of them is rejection and abandonment are you gonna I'm, answer the door i don't want to <laughs> i'm like you got a key um that, i'm sorry that was my husband I got through. I'm actually on now. So I'm sorry. It's okay. So <clears throat> I didn't, I didn't understand. Like I was saying earlier, this is only my third modeling show. Mm -hmm. And I was used to having one designer. Mm -hmm. It's their show. You walk their stuff. Never had it where it was multiple <laughs> Um, designers. Uh huh. So I didn't know that if a designer don't choose you, basically you're not in the show. Who told you that? Because that's not true. So if I'm, we're in here, and I didn't get, I didn't get chosen. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I sat there and instantly it was the questions. What did I do wrong? I thought I walked with confidence. I thought I looked decent. What happened? This is in my head, though. Mm -hmm. So you kept asking me, like, what's wrong? I'm like, nothing. Well, I, I saw it. It's all over your face. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. I'm fine. But I wasn't. Because I was like, okay, 
So my whole weekend was off mm -hmm. because I felt rejected. Um, and so I was, I was confused. Mm -hmm. So whatever years of rejection that I was having from other people just was compiled on, they didn't choose you. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with you. And that's, I wanted to talk to you about it, but I was getting pulled every which way but loose. But the thing about it is, if you have a certain look for a show, and this is what I want, like each particular, each, each show has a theme. To me, that's how I pick my models or how I do it. If it has a theme, this is what I want to do. And the theme that I have this year is totally, it's already set and I already have my fabric and everything already. I already knew what I was doing when we talked about it during the play. He told me I had to come there. So I was like, okay. Because I had already chose, I have models that come with me when I do shows. So if I did um, Kiss My Curves, this is for a size 12 and up. You understand what I'm saying? It would have been all plus size models or whatever. But I already have a group of models that come with me when I do my shows. And if I decided to do that, the only th reason why it was because of a theme. Now, you told me that you were doing, you were modeling for two other different people. It was one of them um, for Anchor. He ended up moving his to the fall. Uh -huh. And then I found out about Mike. I didn't know before. So I end up auditioning for Mike mm -hmm. and got in. And he told me there were 80 models. So I know they're going to do a second walkthrough. I mean, for rehearsal, he said some models couldn't come and some designers could not make it. So I know the whole circuit is small. I know everybody there, every single person. And then the designers that did not come, I know them as well. So he said during the second rehearsal, you know, that's neither here nor there. It had nothing to do with you. You walk with confidence better than a lot of those twigs there. <laughs> a lot of those twigs. And when I tell you I wiped my paper, I just I just couldn't. I told Mike, I said, look, you have to not let the clothes wear you when you're modeling. And I am a traditional designer. I like traditional models. I've done everything from hair wars to high-end runway. Don't mix hair wars with Fashion Week <laughs> so or Paris Fashion Week because everybody's stuck on New York. I'm a little bit higher than that. I want, I'm dealing with Milan Fashion Week and African Fashion Week and Paris Fashion Week. I don't want to stay at that level because anybody can do New York Fashion Week at this point. But they didn't want to... They try to tell me who they are. So when you're a model and you try to tell a designer that, okay, this is the way it is and I'm going to blah, blah, blah. No, you're not walking for me. I don't care how pretty you are. You can't be above what's going on and then you can't walk. Just because you're pretty doesn't mean you're going to be chosen. So a lot of them were upset too because they did not get chosen. Like the guy that was there with me, that is my partner. And I'm like, he's a model coach, been doing it for years. And I'm like, to I'm like, you got to be careful who you meet, and you got to be careful who you talk to, because you don't know who's in the room. Mm -hmm. And you got to be careful how you treat people. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, honestly, I picked two girls there. Several of them got mad because I I scratched everything. I said I just can't. I told Mike I said I can't. Let me call my girls that already that I know for sure. And three of them I have to bring out of retirement because this is what you want me to do. He told me this is what type of show he was dealing with. We were like I said we talked about this during the play, so I was excited about it. So we were already etched in. But I have to come to the model casting. You know they don't want you to to not come but then when i found out other designers weren't there i'm like so i really didn't have to come but respectfully i will be there but it had nothing to do with you you have an amazing walk 
You have an amazing walk. Yes, you are full of confidence. You are beautiful. So it had nothing to do with you. People choose what they want, and you don't want to be naked anyway. Mm -mm. And just because you naked don't mean it's fashion. So sometimes you just got to read the room. Damn. And I'm like, Kiss My Curves is every single year. Sold out show every single year. And it comes around in July. And I'm like, yes, you will be walking for me in that show because you can showcase exactly who you are there. And I'm like, there are a couple of plus size girls in this particular show too. But I'm like, if you have a show that's out of whack and out of theme, they should have explained that to you. Don't let you get ambushed. Well, yeah, just come and just do this and that and not telling you exactly what's expected. So it also leaves you out there in the water like, okay, I, I can't swim. You threw me out here in this water and you just told me to fend for myself and not knowing what's going on. Once you feel embarrassed, yes, I understand everything. I understand exactly how you feel. But don't ever think that is you. Because there's always a place for you. So don't ever not go to another model casting. Go to every single one that you know of. Trust me. And okay, thank you. So I'm like, don't ever think that is you. Ever. Because because mm -mm, I knew it was something wrong and I didn't like it. And I, I know what that, that face is. I know what that face is all too well. So I'm like, she gonna sit up here and tell me. <laughs> I said, apparently she don't know who I am because outside of designing, my ministry is first. God is first in everything and my ministry is before all of this mess. I'll put it all down if he tell me to put it down. So what I want to tell you, no, you're not a failure. And the rejection, it hurts. It hurts my God. And it takes seem like it takes a, life, a lifetime to get over it. Mm -hmm. But I've learned to not put myself in everything. If you know you came there with everything you had in you and like, all right, well, then on to the next one. Mm -hmm. So please don't ever feel that way because I had that really, really bad with men. Mm -hmm. And being dark skin and i mean i know everybody deals with the colorism thing and all of that type of stuff i've been dealing with rejection like my whole life it just became second nature at one point like i already know they're gonna take this person i don't even know why i came you know y'all let you talk me into this and then you get pissed off blaming everybody else when all along you were amazing from the jump secretly hated by everybody but they're not going to tell you. They're going to show you what they hate about you before they tell you that they love everything about you. So you are amazing. And don't you ever forget that. And those little fragments that keep trying to attach themselves to you, you're going to have to cut them off your coattail and keep it moving because it weighs you down. And they don't have the authority nor the permission to keep holding on to you. So you gonna you gonna start some stuff up in here, sunshine. You got me. I just don't like it. I don't like it. And I, I walked um, this world alone a long time, and I do not mind. I um, like I said, this this helps of knowing because I didn't know, and I literally went home. To be honest, pissed off, and I was hurt. Mm -hmm. And what was said and what I saw was two different things. And I was like, so I had to be naked or and I'm thinking, you know, I was modest. You know, I had my face done and just had re dyed my hair. And I'm like, OK, I know I'm killing it. So what's the problem? And I'm like, when you go to a model casting. It's only a tank top and leggings because they want to see who you are. It's never full dress. That should have been explained. You know, it, it, it's a lot of stuff that's always missed. 
And then for one, you go in there, you looking at everybody else like, wow, y'all got leggings on and a tank top or a t-shirt or booty shorts or halfway nothing. And I'm in here fully dressed and I'm actually looking beautiful. And you came in here, you got picked and you had next to nothing on. But that needs to be explained. People need to be more thorough. I've always said that. But when I tell you, when you get into the realm of curvy girls, you will never be looked over. They're going to eat you up. So I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you, twigs ain't where it's at no more. And I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> it's not. And they're like, oh, did you get, I'm like, how dare you ask me, did I get a BBL? Literally, this was at the show. I'm like, girl, folks is still walking around here with real parts, but I wish I could. I'm like, no, stop wishing for everything else that everybody else has. So I'm like, you're a size two or a size four, but now you want to be a size 16 because everybody else is a size 16. And when the fad is over and you're dying because you created this monster and your body is falling apart, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I talked to so many facets and I done been so many different sizes. I done been a size eight and I've been a size 24, 26. So I could talk to all different sizes of women and I understand exactly how you felt even within that environment. The miscommunication always is, is basically uh, uh, um, it makes you feel insecure. It, it gives you a sense of insecurity. Or it makes you feel like you've been singled out just to be mocked. Or I'm like, why did you even waste my time? This is a whole four or five hours. I could have just lived my life doing something else. So I totally understand how you feel in regards to that. So don't take that to heart. Next time, get some information about what's going on. Because I guarantee you, I guarantee you. And I can reach out to at least six designers that completely does plus wear all by itself. And they're killing the game. I have a friend that even models for Ashley. She modeled for Ashley Stewart. She modeled for Lane Bryan. She modeled for Tori. They love her. And she thought all across the board that I, I messed up. I did this. I'm going to pick me. I'm like, why are you doing that? And I have a girl that was an eight that ate herself into a 16, 18. And the fat went in weird places. And they told her they can't pick her after doing all of that. So don't change who you are. Just arrive. Mm -hmm. I just don't want you to, I definitely don't want to see that look no more. Because you didn't do anything wrong. And plus, who told you you were supposed to be modern? Did God say you're doing journalism or you're doing podcasts or you're doing everything that you're doing now or he told you to start modern? Sometime the timing is off. And when the timing is off, he's like, okay, this is what I want you to focus on. These people ain't paying attention to what I want you to do right now. They're not even important at this point. I'm trying to get sunshine to where she need to be. So that wasted five hours was a waste of time because you weren't even supposed to be there. And it's never too late. Mm -hmm. It's all about learning what time and what season you're supposed to be in. Now you're trying to get your podcast, all of this stuff up and running. And we focus and I'm guilty as well. A lot of people are guilty. When God gives us gifts, we do everything but the gift he gave us. We focus on everything. Like when it comes easy, we like, oh, it's so boring. I don't want to do that no more. Oh, my God. Let me go pay a hundred and some thousand and learn a new trade when he gave you this gift that is going to make you millions. But you kicked it away because you're so fascinated with something he told you not to do. And once you have spent all this time and you done wasted all of these years 
and you've just sat up there completely erased all of the love and faith that you have in yourself on something that didn't even give back to you and it, you, you can't get it back anymore it's dead and gone so now you got the few little sprinkle of years you have left trying to get back everything that you've lost while the devil's taking all of your years and your time from you so if this is what you want to do focus on this and put everything you have into that till he tell you sunshine go do something else because i guarantee you already you're walking for me in that show i'm i'm in that show in august i'm just letting you know i'm already in that show and it's prominent and it sails out so during that time you go up there and you'll see how much love you were meant to get yes ma'am all right yes ma'am i'm just saying i'm just saying this this world ain't giving us nothing we whatever we don't we just have to pray and just let god continue to direct us ask holy spirit every morning like what do you want me to do what you want me to say what you want me to wear i mean it takes uh -oh. it takes a lot is it done <laughs> that was weird now her phone didn't do anything that time you saw that black or whatever it went out mm -hmm. well he just getting mad but he ain't gonna have no authority right. over this conversation <laughs> either <laughs> Like, you get mad all you want to um but they heard what they needed to hear you was too slow uh what was i about to say i didn't forget now i'm sorry <laughs> i really i really truly forgot but however mm -hmm. you, you helped me a lot um, I was already kind of turning the corner and I felt better today than I had since Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that helped me a lot of knowing the situation and now I know how to move accordingly. And now I got uh, another prospect. What you mean? In August, I need you to reach out to Jaleesa Granger. Okay. She runs the Kiss My Curve show. But okay. also, she dabbles in everything. And once you get into that world, don't go until the Lord say go. Because you are going to be busy. Consistently busy. Okay. So, make sure you make sure it's a season that is good for you keep praying about who you are and keep praying against these little small attacks he keep having on your mind and i'm like if you want to pray right now we can it does not matter to me you know we can cancel out some stuff put them at bay get them the heck on somewhere because you got too much to do for you i know we were supposed to been talking about designing and all of that type of stuff but he comes first and your spiritual walk comes first and who you are in him comes first to me. That's just how it feels because no more will he take anything else from us or from you. Mm -hmm. You tired of him stealing your joy. You tired of him stealing all of your, even when it comes to your podcast, you still sit here. You be like, man, should I still be doing, you thinking about this all the while you're doing podcasts with other people. Your mind is in two separate places. You try, well, I don't, I don't even think I should even do this. I'm not even getting the turnout I want. I haven't seen half of them, but I could just hear you say, I, I don't, I'm not even getting the turnout I want. I keep putting all this in there. Nobody's coming to support me. Ain't nobody sharing my stuff. Nobody's doing this, but I'm always at a, a gig. I'm always at a movie production. I'm always at somebody's this, and I'm always at somebody's that. And put all that into you from here on out. You can support According. You don't need to be stressing yourself out about everything. So put all of that energy into you going forward. I'm just saying. I ain't gonna cry no more. I'm done. 
is is all on, is is yours. And I that's just how I feel. I I love talking. I love encouraging and I love uplifting. I done been through entirely too much in my life. I don't like to see people hurt. I've been raped six times. I've had serial molesters. I've been beaten. So I walk around, I should be walking around just pissed off and mad at everybody. But no, none of them are going to beat me. No situation. The devil can get mad all he want to. But he knows that I'm going to have a victory in the end. And you're going to have the victory in the end. Girl, if you ain't in my business, I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm wow. just saying. It was funny that you said that. Mm -hmm. I have also been raped several times. I just talked to my attempted molester yesterday. And he was trying to have a casual conversation with me as if I forgot. And I wanted to tell him because I hadn't seen him and I hadn't talked to him. Why? I wanted you to apologize for touching me. And then, why did you touch me? And the crazy thing, I'm like 17. You super grown. I didn't provoke you. I never looked at you. I never gave you no clue, no idea to touch me. You changed the course of my life. And then you say, please for to start to have a new beginning. Please forgive me. I forgive you. But you still ain't say you sorry for touching me. And then you say, well, I hope you have a better life. Really? I'm going to tell you this. When it first started, when I was four, four, I used to think that I was cursed because I didn't know what this thing was that I had. I said, so why, do, why is everybody trying to get to it? What is this thing? Why? do everybody want to hurt me why why so many people want to hurt me why is why are people hurting me period so i got past the last mes molestation before i got gang raped by my cousins i was ready to i did i tried to commit suicide twice that year i was full forgive him and release that out your spirit because the apology that you're seeking, you may not never get. You, you may not. I'm not saying that you won't. You may not never get it. But you have to forgive him and begin to purge and let that stuff go. Because it will eat away at you until you're non-existent. You won't even know who you are anymore. And... I walked him many years. I, I wanted him to hurt. I wanted all of them <laughs> to hurt. I went through a phase of hating men. I went through a phase of using my body to manipulate men because I know that's all they wanted. But I was still crying like I need my dad. What am I doing? What did I do as a, and I, the same question, what did I do as a four-year-old 
to make you feel that you needed to do that to me. Not once, but weekly. And I said, Lord, what am I here for? So he told me, you're precious. And I'm going to be honest, as much as I love God, I was like, how can you say that? How can you say that? And at one point I said, Lord, how can you allow them to do that to me? Who are these? Why are they so evil? <laughs> like, why? Why did y'all decide to do this to me out of everything? But then I got to a point where I'm going to love Trisha. I'm going to forgive all of them and I'm going to let it go. Because I never got the same apology that you wanted. I ran across mine. And a, a situation was, I, my, the, actually, the, when my grandmother died, he came back the same one, my serial molester. We wound up in a room together at my grandmother's wake. And on the TV was the um, show about the kids, like the grown-ups faking like their children to catch pedophiles. The show came on TV in front of both of us. And he had the nerve to say that I would kill a nigga if they ever did that to my kids. Yeah, as I turned around, I, look, I said, I didn't even get a chance to really say anything. I said, are you serious? And he looked at me like he totally forgot that. How could you forget that you did that? Not once, but you turned it into a routine. And you sitting here in front of me looking at a show about pedophiles and telling me I would kill him if they did something like that to my kids. He got up. He ran out. I have not seen him again. This was 2008. He did not say sorry. He did not. He didn't say a word. He just ran. Wow. <clears throat> when I tell you, we have so much in common. It's some stuff I never told my parents. They don't know to this day. Mm -hmm. and even starting at four. It's four. I thought it was a game and it made me, this is our game, don't tell nobody. And the only way I knew it was true that I didn't make that up is other family members were talking about it. Not my situation, but their situations. Yeah. Like, wow, you too? My siblings. Same one, two other siblings of mine. You two? Mm -hmm. So you go on like nothing happened. And you find out when you're older why you were so promiscuous. Because you started young and it wasn't your fault. And that spirit stays with you. And you wonder why you have <clears throat> low self-esteem. You don't want people looking at you for real. Because I don't want you to rape me. I don't want you. To... I'm not giving this no more tears. I've cried so many years. All you want is somebody to really love you and protect you. Yeah. Not the BS and not the lies. I'm over it. Yeah. Yeah. And some stuff, like I said, this weekend triggered me. And that's why I said it was rough. Because I thought 
some of this stuff I was over. But clearly I'm not. So. Look. We're going to have to get together. <clears throat> and we're going to have to do a spiritual release because I had to do that. I was um literally I think it was 2019. I felt like I was dying. In the midst of ministry, everything else I said, God, somebody need to talk to me about all of this. I thought I was fine until my sister called me with him on the phone. And he said, Hello, sweetheart. And it triggered something in me that took me back out to a place, even with my husband. My husband's name is Daryl, and my molester's name is Daryl. And I'm being so vulnerable on this live now because I don't care because somebody needs some help. And I'm like, I don't even know why I took this turn, but apparently somebody needed to hear it. I would be with my husband and I would cringe and fold because he would hug me in a certain way that triggered me. And I thought I was over it. I'm just as happy for all these last 20 some years until then. I said, why is this back? What's, what is this? What is this? I don't want. And I felt like I was going to die. And I wound up meeting Pastor per uh, Carolyn Gil uh, Belcher. I wound up doing Christian counseling. I didn't even know it was such thing as Christian counseling. I had no idea. But what she did for me was absolutely amazing. The stuff I had been longing for for years. I'm like, help me. I said, help me with... I don't know what this is. I'm sorry. I was like, help me with uh, understanding why am I ne I can't stay happy. Why do I always have this aching feeling in my heart where I just burst out crying, not knowing why the heck I'm freaking crying. I'm just feeling so much sorrow and I started crying. She prayed with me. She talked to me about things. She let me know the spiritual aspect of what was going on. And I thank God for it because I, I knew even within ministry, people have to understand that this thing is real. We have been through a lot and we can't talk to anybody about it because they don't understand. Or either they're too scared to say something. Because he told me he would kill my mom and dad when I was four. So not knowing that he was doing that to my other siblings or whatever, not God knows what he told them, but I didn't find out until years later that he did that. I'm like, oh, wow, y'all, like you said, you too. And I have been asking, I said, why is this back? I said, I feel like I'm dying again. And I said, I should not feel depressed and hurt. So uh, I talked to her. We prayed. We had sessions. And she released a lot in me that had been there that needed to go or if not we would not have made it I, I wouldn't have been with anybody because this thing creeps back up in your life you got to get rid of it you got to release it out your life forgive them and let it go and love on you please love on you because they're not allowed to take no more from you no more family friends the molesters the beat they the people who beat you every they they're not allowed to take anything else from you after today it's not theirs to have so start filling your cup back up and don't let anybody take a sip unless they earn it Because you deserve that.
So I'm so sorry. We need to praise God and get off this mess because I don't want to put you in no place. We can get back up to where we were. But whoever heard this, I pray that it helped. <clears throat> it did. Trust me. If it didn't help nobody else, it sure help me. Well, the Lord got the victory in everything, honey. Everything. Everything. I said I wasn't going to cry, and you had me crying like five times. I'm, Oops. <laughs> I'm glad I ain't go deep in my makeup today because I've been mad. Girl, I was like, she going to talk about me and my little struggle bun I got up here today. <laughs> Girl. I said, look, I, oh, and my little kids at school, you know, I'm a teacher at Harper Woods High School. I love my babies. And we're raising entrepreneurs there. And go ahead and start picking up them pieces and pull yourself back up here. Get, let it go. Breathe and let it go. <laughs> let it go. Right. Because I'm like, I, I can't stay there too long. I ain't going to stay there too long. This water show is good. I see. <laughs> sure. But I, I love you. I love you. Everything. Me. What in the world? Girl. Well, that's I do. Not how that's supposed to happen. But I love you with everything in me. I'm so bright right now, that's for sure. <laughs> you sure are. <laughs> Listen, I gotta put on. <laughs> I'll Ooh. be so bright. I'll be like, There's you... nothing wrong with you being bright. How you gonna have it? Like, you be killing me. I'm like, Your name. Like, and I take you, your name is Sunshine. Like, what do you want? What do you want to say? So, <laughs> like your name is so the, the, Hear me. Right, so the, the region <laughs> of people was jacking my name up as easy as Camila is. Mm -hmm. They were saying everything but. So this older man was like, you look like a sunshine. Mm -hmm. And it stuck. I'd rather for you to say sunshine than mess my name up. Mm-hmm. And so um, it stuck. And so it was like, you when you come in, you bring all this joy and happiness and brightness and um, just your personality. And um, I was like, you know what? I do, don't I? It's like, yeah, you care more than anybody. Um, so what does the brain... The sun brings the light to every situation. I'm the real friend that get most of the time misunderstood. But what I say is really genuine. When I say I really love you, I really mm -hmm. care. I really want you to win. I really do. Yeah. Um, one of the things that God has said to me about this podcasting. He said, you're going to become the help that you once needed before. Hmm. Was it help? Good. Was it advice? Was it to put you in front of somebody else that can help you? That's what I do. I'm a natural connector. I know somebody in this circle to help you get further than where you need to be. Because we can't get there by ourselves. It take all of us. Take a village. Just like you said, oh, you want a model? Oh, you want to do plus my? Oh, I have somebody for you. This is supposed to be natural. This is the easiest thing you can do. Mm -hmm. It's suggest, like, share. It's not that hard. I want you to win. Mm -hmm. Nothing to it. Yeah. I don't have a hidden agenda at all. Mm -hmm. Why did I like Ellen DeGeneres? Well, against all odds, Ellen DeGeneres was herself. Unapologetic mm -hmm. herself. Gay and all. What did she do? Helped everybody. Even when they didn't like her. All the way to the end. 
That's me. That's me. So do you hear yourself? I Bang am. this to yourself? Yes, that's me. So if you have to replay this part that you just said and continuously play what you just said just now in your own ear, I don't even want you to look at it. I want you to put an a earpiece in and listen to your voice say exactly what you just said just now. Because most instances when you minister to other people, you minister to yourself. And you get a whole lot of revelation in speaking and encouraging. And you're not knowing that, oh, my God, I needed to hear that. Dang, that, I needed to hear that myself. So I need you to take that and hold on to it and don't let it go. Oh, I'm going to get to TV for sure. I believe that. I believe oh, I, I know that for a fact. God already showed me that. And I believe this 100%. is the thing. Being a trailblazer is not easy. Mm -hmm. I'm not in a place to judge because I've been there on both sides of it. Mm -hmm. I've had the jacked up situations. I've survived. Was once, would you want to call it bisexual, whatever, but I survived. Mm -hmm. I turned it all, all the like suicidal stuff, but I survived. Mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to be here, but I am. That's the thing. Who cares what you were? But that's why I'm saying like, they asked me when I say Ellen DeGeneres, why not, why not Oprah? Well, if she was, I didn't know. But against all odds, that's what I saw with Ellen. Did I? Yeah, guess? but you also not to interrupt, but also just her personality and love. It doesn't even have to be connected to that. You understand what I'm saying? Like she this is what I want to do. This is what I'm portraying. This is what's out there. That can be anything, but folks don't understand that things doesn't have to be inside four walls. When you go out doing that, you don't know who's looking at you. You don't know who need to see you say exactly what you said. You don't know who needs to see you do exactly what you do. Because you're inspiring somebody else to say, well, man, if she can get up there and do that, God dog, and I'm going to be able to get up there and do that. And I'm like, why, why not me? Why not? Why not me? <clears throat> it's awesome. I promise you. Even in the, the ugliness of life, it's always still bring something beautiful. Mm -hmm. Always. There was... um the story of the orchid, the orchid flower. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, but it also thrives in mud. Mm -hmm. Mud. The worst of it all, all conditions. <laughs> but it's the most beautiful flower ever. Yes. So, ooh, I need to get an orchid tattooed on me. Doesn't need a lot of care. No. Doesn't need all of that extra sunlight. Don't need to be seen by a whole lot. And it purifies. So it's um, an amazing flower. Amazing flower. Yes. Vibrant. But it thrives in a place that is not supposed to thrive in. Yeah, I know about orchids all too well. Isn't that <laughs> all too well. Isn't that something? Again, if you got, and I think this is probably the longest show I've been in this year, but however, <laughs> it was needed. I, I, I tell you, my shows are never scripted. 
they don't know what I'm going to talk about because I don't know. But however, always it's on purpose. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you because you helped me in a space that I don't think nobody could. Why? You've been oh, there. God. You've been there. You know. And I had to go through it for you, so. Absolutely. There was a point, and this is the last, well, there was two points to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was a moment in life where I hated mirrors. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to look in the mirror because I didn't like what I saw. And then there was a thing about darkness. I became comfortable being in the dark. And then one day, I walked past the mirror. And it was as if myself caught myself to mm. the mirror. <laughs> myself says, stand here. And look. And look. If don't nobody else ever tell you you're beautiful or you're gorgeous, you are. Now, it's time to come out of the dark. I ain't gonna do it. It's time for you to come out of the dark. And from that moment on, I was out. Then I was like, dang, you have been hiding yourself because of the stuff people did to you. And the seeds that were planted. Whew. But not no more. The sun had to come out. And I don't mean tomorrow either. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm out. Good morning. Cut all that stuff off. Like I said, your road is only big enough for your <sighs> I have to tell my kids this. You have a path in front of you that's just wide enough for your feet. And you walk that path. You're going to have things that you need to pick up and move out of the way. Sometimes step over. But as you go, don't pick up so much stuff where you can't see the path no more. So you coming out saying, okay, that sunshine, that is amazing because you dropped all of that mess. And now you're able to see exactly where you're going. Because mm -hmm. if you're holding it, you can't look down. And then what you really need in front of you, when it's time for you to pick it up, how are you going to pick it up when you got a handful of unnecessary stuff? So what are you going to do to pick up what you need? Not what you want, what you need. Right. You're going to... Are you going to try and hold it, stuff spilling everywhere? Are you going to drop all that unnecessary stuff and pick up the thing you need and keep going? Absolutely. There's going to be some people that's about to fall off and drop out of your life as of this week. So don't be alarmed because they can't go with you. I don't care how long you've been on it. Amen. I don't care how nice they were last week. I don't care what plugs they have. There's no space for unbeneficial things anymore because he has something for you and you can't take all everybody else's stuff with you. True. It's okay. You're not going to die alone even with a partner 
when you feel some days you feel like you're alone anyway but focus on that and get that straightened out first and then everything else gonna fall into place but your house gotta be in order first trust me God is amazing. So it's all it's all gonna work out. Praise the Lord. And I'm gonna be right there with you. <laughs> I don't drink, but I'm gonna drink me a hard cold glass of cranberry juice. And we go right. in a wine glass <laughs> and we go <gonna> celebrate. <laughs> Absolutely. We go celebrate. I'm going to look back at this and be like, girl, yes, I know. I know. We sit up here crying like an ugly on the phone, both of us. Not knowing what's going on. <laughs> but I don't care. As long as I was able to do what God want me to do tonight. And I'm like, it is what it is. It is what it is. Well, it is 920. <laughs> yes. Woo. However, I did the church announcements earlier, so I don't have to do those again. Um, <laughs> but I will say if you want to uh, donate to the cause um, to sow a seed into me, um, mm -hmm. the cash app is Sunshine Camila. A-M-I-L-A-H. That is how you say my real name. And that is how you really spell it. You know, people are still spelling my name. K-A-M-E-L-A. <laughs> well, I screenshot it so I won't get it wrong. <laughs> um, Waffle Cafe, again, please support. Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. 18685 Livinois, Detroit. You can call them 313-739-6308. They have some of the best food. Ooh, we waffles, the wraps. I mean, you can't go wrong. I'm gonna have to check. Um, I've never been there. Oh, girl, they get my money almost every weekend. <laughs> And they make me go to the west side. So, you know, it got to be something. Again, support Black Top Streetball Association. Um, tour starting the, um, the first weekend in August all the way to September. The last week it will be in Vegas. So hopefully I'll get to go um, and support them. Um, start acting up. Um, what is this? Again, this has been this conversation um, with this wonderful... She's, I can't even. She was all in my business. And I didn't <laughs> talk to her. It's crazy. Thanks a lot. Um, I'm sorry. I just make sure that I will not wear any makeup around her. Thanks a lot. I'm sorry. Because it's not going to stay. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I know, right? Um, again, fashion show that we're both in. Um, will be August 11th at Eastern Market Shed 3 at 6 30. I think uh, uh, tickets are on sale already at Eventbrite. Um, uh, $40 is general admission, $60 is VIP. You don't want to miss it at all. At uh oh, uh -oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, she didn't drop the phone. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, about to die. This has definitely been an awesome conversation, a real one as always. Again, I believe in six degrees of separation. You're literally one person away, one advice away, one help away from where you need to be in your destiny. Prove it over and over again. I will see y'all on Tuesday. No, no, no. Because Tuesday is a holiday. Thursday. Um, I will be here again with a TT from the D and her husband, um, Spiffy McVeigh from D12. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's been a wonderful night. 
and I am getting off so I can go eat and go to bed. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs>